Hello everybody, so today we are going to talk about how to do tune-ups on mid-range diesel engines. So to start with, we got to go back to some basics so we understand why we're doing some of the things that we're doing. And one of the things we gotta understand is the ratio between crankshaft revolutions and camshaft revolutions. So these inline six cylinder diesel engines that we have here are four stroke engines, which means that the uh, four strokes are compression, power, uh, intake and exhaust, not necessarily in that order. Um, so if we look down here, you got the crankshaft. The crankshaft has to rotate two times in order to get this cam gear to rotate one time, right? So that means that every rocker arm on the top of the engine is going to push a valve open every two rotations of this crankshaft. Now the reason why that is important is if we come over here and look at this guy, you can see right inside here that there is a little notch on the back of the pulley and a little arrow pointing down at it. Now what that says right above it, and I know you can't see it in the video, but it says TDC, top dead center. So when that little notch is lined up with that arrow, what that means is that cylinders number one and six are at top dead center. Now the reason why what I showed you before applies here is that just because that crankshaft pulley is lining up with the TDC arrow doesn't mean that the cam is putting number one at TDC compression, right? It could be all the way down there at the end. Number six could be at TDC compression. So the way that you tell once you've got the timing mark lined up is you will come over to the valve train after you take off your valve cover and anything else that you need to get to the rocker arms and you check for something called valve overlap, right? So valve overlap is going to be when both rocker arms on a cylinder are both pushing their valves down at the same time. The only time that happens is at top dead center of the exhaust stroke. All these cylinders have a travel companion. The firing order of this inline six cylinder engine is 153624. Now, cylinders number one and six, they are travel companions. And if one is at top dead center compression, that means that six is at top dead center exhaust and vice versa. If six is at top dead center compression, then one is at top dead center exhaust. Valve overlap is how we can confirm which of those positions one and six are in because valve overlap only occurs at the very top of the exhaust stroke. So if I came over here and I wiggled both of these rocker arms on six and they were both tight, that would tell me that both sets of valves, intake and exhaust, are both being pushed open at the same time, which means number one is top dead center exhaust or number six is top dead center exhaust, which tells me in turn that it's travel made up there at the front, number one is at top dead center compression. Now, why that's important is because on these mid-range engines, I can adjust half of these rocker arms with number one at TDC compression, and then I have to rotate it 360 degrees, and then I can adjust the other half because then number six is at TDC compression. So once I find out which one is at compression, I will use this table right here. All right, so once you've used that table and used the valve overlap method and you figured out where you are, then you can start adjusting rocker arms. So we are at uh, number six, uh, top dead center compression. So according to that table, we can adjust the rocker arms on six, and so I'm gonna sh just show you right here on this one, the procedure, and then you're just gonna repeat it, you know, 11 more times basically, because uh, it's the same on each one of these. But the first thing you wanna do when you're doing the adjustment is you wanna break loose the lock nut, right? So the lock nut, you wanna put the box into the wrench on and then break it loose. Now you can see that if I don't have my ratchet on top, that the nut is moving, but so is the adjusting screw. So I need to put my ratchet on the adjusting screw so that I can keep the adjusting screw from moving 
while I break loose the lock nut, right? I don't need to break loose the lock nut and I don't need to run it like all the way up here because I'm only adjusting a few thousandths of an inch, right? I just need the lock nut out of loose enough that I can move the adjusting screw back and forth a little bit. So that's step one, right? Is to loosen that lock nut. Once that lock nut is loose, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert my feeler gauge. So the feeler gauge is gonna go right between what we call the elephant's foot of the rocker arm and the bridge that goes between the two valves. So you take your feeler gauge, you put it between those two things, and then you're going to tighten the adjusting screw while you feel for drag. And what you want to feel here is like an equal amount of drag on both the top and the bottom. This is one of those things that's very objective and you really need someone who's trained to do this to kind of feel one that's adjusted correctly and tell you that's how it should feel. So this is the hard part if you're just watching it on a video, but here's a quick tip. If you look at the very side of the feeler gauge, if you can rock it up and down like I am on this one, then that tells you that you're a little bit too loose. You want to be able to move in and out, but not have too much wiggle room like that, right? So I would adjust this a little tighter. Now I can't wiggle it, but I can go in and out. Now, once I'm at that point, I want to take my wrench again, and I want to tighten my adjustment down. I do not want my adjusting screw to turn with it because that will mess up the adjustment I just did. So that's why we use the box in, put it down over the the lock nut, and then I will tighten the lock nut while holding the adjusting screw with the ratchet. Then, the one critical step that a lot of people don't do that's really critical is that this is an imperfect method. That adjusting screw, no matter how strong I am, might move a little bit while I'm tightening this lock nut. So I always want to re-address my uh, setting. I want to recheck it after I've tightened that lock nut to make sure I didn't mess up the adjustment. And then you just repeat that on the half of the valves that that chart says that you can, then rotate the engine 360 degrees and then do this exact same procedure on the other half of the rocker arms. And then you're done. You've done a tune up on a mid range diesel engine, which is going to help improve fuel mileage. It's gonna reduce emissions. It's going to increase engine life. Um, and it's something that probably doesn't get done often enough on these types of engines. Um, so why are we doing these adjustments, Mr. G? Why are we doing these adjustments? We are compensating for wear. Yeah. Exactly. If you don't do these adjustments, then eventually you're gonna lose the room between these for heat expansion, and you're gonna have valves that hang open when the engine gets up to operating temperature, which is gonna reduce compression, reduce engine power, increase the amount of fuel it takes to use the engine. So a tune-up is basically a spark plug and wires for a diesel engine, right? We're doing this instead of spark plugs and wires, but it's the same result. It makes the engine run better.